Okay, Ron Zabraki here. Just want to give you a quick or a not so quick video on what I've been playing around with on the uh, Helix this evening. I've been watching and learning from other people's videos and I've been loving it in the studio going directly in to some preamps and no amplifiers or anything like that but tonight I decided to try to have some fun because I remembered with my HD 500 I was playing at BB King's in New York one night with uh, uh, the Brotherhood of the Grape and I was playing using the HD 500 directly into the front end of an old uh, Fender Twin and it was one of the best sounds I ever got live so I said well, if that was that good, let's see what this could sound like. Just I'm um, going, running it right through a black star. There's no microphones. This is coming right off the camera. So don't freak if it doesn't sound great. I'll be doing better videos soon. It's just I'm still setting up the studio since my relocation back to New York. So tonight I said, let me, let me just see what I could do with this and, uh, you know, apply a few of the things that I've learned. And um, as anything else, these things will probably sound the best. or will definitely sound the best through one of the FRFR. Um, uh, cabinet because it, it, it's really made for that or two of them even better which I think that might be the way I'm gonna have to go but there's gonna be places I might be doing some things like uh, that aren't gonna necessarily have the best setups or whatever and I'm gonna have to go through an amplifier maybe it could be a church or it could be I could be playing in a church or I could be playing in a in a community theater or something like that and I said well let's see if I could I could set this up and apply some of the things I've learned um, up, you know, instead of bringing my, my pedal board, which has, I really made a heavy investment in it last year. So I have all these really nice pedals by every company possible. And, uh, you know, and it's madness when you got to set that up. There's a lot going on. You do the four cable thing, you know, you're going through some through the front, some through the back of the amp. But I said, okay, we know what happens when you run certain things through the front of the amp. So I set up a basic clean sound on my amplifier and I started dialing in what I would consider to be a good chain that I'd like to use live using every possible effect that I might want and this is just man this is like the first night of it this is nothing the sounds are not dialed in but it's just to show you my thinking process so if we take a look at this and I call this preset Ron live snaps because I was also for the first time literally this evening using snapshots so I set up a bunch of effects all in a row, just the way I would, just to see what would happen. So if we look up here, and we go, I'm just going to reach on over. What we have first is my noise gate. And the noise gate is not even going to be assigned to any of the, uh, the pedals over here. It's always staying on on here. And trust me, you're going to want to do this. We'll get into that another time. But the noise gate stays on. The next thing in my chain is, um, let's see. For the dynamics, I have a compressor, the deluxe compressor, because it really uses all the good stuff, the ratio, attack, release, mix, thresholds. So that's a nice compressor to use in the Helix. Next, we have a simple EQ. I, do, um, I have the compressor running to a pedal, uh, you know, uh, a pedal, but I don't have it to, um, you know, to a foot switch, but I don't have the, um, the noise gate. And I also have set up a, a graphic EQ, and I used a very simple EQ and just to boost a little top, a little mid, what, a little bottom, whatever. Just play with it until it sounded better through my amplifier. I know you can set up a global EQ, but I said let me put this in there, but I did not assign it to a foot switch. So after that, I like to immediately go to some other things. So we got our gate, we have our compression, we have our EQ, but now I decided to put in some of the other things. So we have an optical trem, uh, tremolo, and you see that would be right over here. And we could shut off like all these other things here that we don't want. But very simple one. I, I can make the intensity much more. And it's also set up to a tap tempo. But um, see, so put on some compression without it. With it, whatever the standard stuff. After the um, optical trim, I figured a flanger would be nice or a phaser. I chose a flanger, and that's this one, the gray flanger. See, just a nice little, just for very, very, very little motion. I don't have 
I don't have a lot in there, but it's, it's more than enough for what I want to do tonight. Uh, after that, I went to some distortions. I started with the uh, 808, and that's set up just for a basic. Just a basic distortion. And then after that, I went to a heavier distortion, the uh, Stupor OD. And that's a little bit heavier. But if I put them both on, it's much better for a lead type situation. After that, a vintage delay. And it's set to the tap tempo. After that, a mod chorus echo. Finally, a plate reverb. So that might be all the effects I might really want to use live. So then I said, well, time to uh, see how they work when I want to put them together. And this is where the snapshots come in really handy. So you switch the mode here. And we I set up only four on the bottom. I have it set where I can make eight snapshots. But um, I chose just four. So when I press this, it turns on and off just the way a looper pedal would. I didn't even bother with the uh, volume control. I didn't bother with a didn't bother with a wah wah. I just went to just the straight stuff. And um, this first snapshot is just a just a clean sound. And if we take a look at it, I have the deluxe compressor on, the vintage delay, a little plate reverb, and the gray flanger. So that's all that's over there. And I can still turn on anything I want at any point. Now if I go to the next part, next to uh, snapshot, back in snapshot mode, I call it little dirt, because it's a little bit of dirt, you know, just, just the, that's all it is, just a, just a little bit of dirt, and uh, we go to the mode, we see what's happening for the little dirt, we have the um, 808 on, and a little plate reverb, and that's it. We go back here, go to third snapshot, this is my trem dirt. Kind of. When we take a look at what's on over here, we have the optical trem on, the 808, the vintage delay also this time, and the plate reverb. And by the way, at this point I can also mention that any of the parameters for each snapshot can also be changed for each individual effect. So try doing that with pedals, you know, individual effect pedals, and these sound great. I, I will be comparing them, but I, I'm really happy and satisfied with what I'm, you know, with what I'm hearing here. We go back to the uh, snapshot again, and then we have a lead mode I set up because now we have my cleans, I got my little dirts, I got an affected dirt, and then a lead. And I could continue, I could make four more, but... So if we go to the, um, the lead snap, it's completely wrong. So let's see, let's see what happened to me over here. I probably switched it earlier. So if we go to the right, we go over here, we want to turn on the, uh, oh wait, I could just do this, go back to my preset, back here, back here, back here, okay, live snaps, there you go, see if you, if you screw something up like I obviously just did, you can just reload the, um, the actual preset, the bank, you know, with the, with the entire preset, and they're all back in here, so you see, if I go to change the mode, we got the clean one again, we have the little dirt one. We have the trem dirt. This is all new to me right now, so bear with me. I'm not even going to edit this. I made a mistake. It's okay. And then we go to the lead. And when I take a look at what's on for the lead, we have the deluxe, deluxe compressor. Um, that's just adding just a, just a little bit more oomph. Hits hitting the effects a little harder. I have both overdrives on the Scream, uh, the Scream 808 and the Stupor OD. By the way, these are totally different than the overdrives I would use when I go directly into my recording setup instead of going through an amplifier. I love the Tine um, amplifier. You notice also I'm not using any of the amp models over here because I'm going into a Black Star amplifier, a clean amp right in. 
no, I want to use the, I want it to, you know, I want it to, to sound like my black star. So there you go. I have that. And uh, now I'm using the effects that worked with this to my ear tonight. Not at high volume. It's a little bit late. Whatever. Don't want to wake anybody up. But um, when we turn on the lead once again, we're dealing with a deluxe compressor. Two overdrives, one feeding into the other. A vintage delay and a plate reverb. And it's just not the worst sound. <laughs> I love the fact that I don't have to worry about noise. There's no noise really happening. The noise gate's taking care of that automatically. I don't even have it on a thing. I don't want to turn it on and off. Uh, I'm really happy with this. Um, the snapshots couldn't be easier to do if you want to write a snap. Let's say if I wanted to make a new snapshot. So I um, let's say I go up here, snapshot five, right? And let's say I want to have uh, shut off the compressor. Leave just that, let's leave that, that chorus, or maybe this one. We have one with the other one, we have this one. Now I'll go with the flange and a little bit of dirt. Now let's say I'm happy with something like that. Let's say this is just nothing, I'm not even playing anything. But just to show you. And I was happy with what I'm hearing here. And if I want to save that, I go to the mode. And we're in snapshot five. And there it is. It's already there. Just so you know. But we want to name it something. So we hold down the preset button. Rename snapshots right here. And um, at this point, I could just say, okay, I want to call it... Uh, let's see, what, what does it sound like? Flange. Dirt, or dirt flange, dirt nap, whatever. Let me just go through, change each one of these. Dirt. I'll just go FL. There we go. Just changing the uh, alphabet right here. And there it is, dirt flange, and you say, okay. So now, the dirt flange is over here. The lead is over there. Trim dirt here. Little dirt here. Clean here. Go back home. Hit save. And right up here. Here we go. Just save it. And we're done. Saved. We're back to clean. And when you switch these things now, the um, when you're using other other digital modeling things, you know, when you don't use snapshots, if you went to a different, entire different preset, it might cut off, it will definitely cut off your um, echoes and things. But over here, I switch to the clean, it's still there. Switch it. All still there. I think this is also going to come in handy somehow in the studio. I really don't use these things a lot. Like I use one sound, I track a, you know, do a track. But I know having all these things at my disposal is, going to, is just going to work great. I haven't even um, set it up so that I can use my um, JTV Variax guitars, the, the 69 or the 89, and uh, control the actual sounds in the Variax from here also. You can do all of that. And if I want to add more distortion for some reason or something like that, I can... You know, whatever, I can plug in analog plugins in the back. You know, watch all the videos. They're all there. There's so many great ones out there. But I hope you learned something tonight. I'm digging this thing. It's a lot of fun. Thanks for watching. Nothing special. A lot more to come. But I've been feeling just itchy just to, you know, get going and start showing you people things. So this is just a down and dirty one. First one. Hope you liked it. Have a good night. Enjoy. <laughs>